Hi, welcome to this introduction to Seaborn series. My name is Kimberly Fessel and I'll be guiding you through these videos. Each video in this series will focus on one Seaborn aspect or plot type. The videos will be a blend of slides to introduce and visualize each topic, screen shares of code to demonstrate the Seaborn options and syntax, as well as example visuals to provide you with inspiration on what is possible with Seaborn. By the way, all of the code that is either demonstrated or used to build those example visuals will be available to you on my GitHub page. You'll see descriptions of distribution plots, box plots, violin plots, as well as many, many more. But first I want to introduce you to Seaborn itself, and I'm going to do that in four stages. First, we'll talk about how to install Seaborn and get up and running. Then I'll show you how Seaborn compares to matplotlib. Then we'll talk about how Seaborn and pandas interact with each other. And finally, I'll leave you with a gallery of example visuals that we'll be learning in this series. So with all that said, let's get started. In order to use the Seaborn library, you first need to install it. So you can either get it through uh, the installation of Anaconda, Seaborn comes with that, or you can type pip install Seaborn into your command line and hit enter. Once you've got the Seaborn library installed, you'll need to import that library in whatever Python script you are working on. Um, I actually often work in Jupyter Notebook, but of course you could do this in a Python script as well. Um, I often uh, alias the Seaborn library as SNS, so you'll see in most of my code, import Seaborn as SNS. Then whenever I need to reference that Seaborn library, I can just write SNS. With those preliminaries out of the way, let's check out some Seaborn code. So in order to demo some Seaborn code, I'm actually going to start out with matplotlib. So I'll just go ahead and import the pyplot library and create two lists of data. Then I'm just going to plot that data with uh, pyplot.plot. And you'll see I just have this, uh, this line for each of those four data points. So the nice thing about Seaborn, just by importing Seaborn and updating your settings, you can make this figure look quite a bit better. So let's see that in action. First, I'm just going to import Seaborn, and I typically give this an alias. So I'm, when I want to refer to Seaborn in the future, I'll just call up SNS. So now I'm going to use SNS.set. And here I'm putting in the exact same code that I used before, pyplot.plot. But we'll see that the figure is dramatically better, in my opinion. Um, and that's because in this .set, we've actually updated several different parameters. Um, we have set our style to be dark grid, uh, and our palette, and our font, and etc. So we've set different properties. Um, we've just updated the defaults that matplotlib sets um, to be these better defaults. And with Seaborn, you actually have access to several different styles. If you'd like to go back to kind of that matplotlib style, you can set your style to be white. And now we see something pretty similar to what we started with. So I just wanted to say for completeness, um, the version of matplotlib I'm using is 3.0.3, and my version of Seaborn is actually 0.9.0. So I'll be using these two versions uh, for the remainder of this Seaborn series. So how was Seaborn able to update that matplotlib figure? Well, it turns out that Seaborn actually updates matplotlib's RC parameters. RC stands for run commands. These are basically just default parameters that get initialized when you make a new figure. So Seaborn actually updates some of the defaults, for example, the background color, the grid color, the font size, etc. So you might hear that Seaborn is a wrapper for matplotlib. That basically just means that Seaborn is built on top of the matplotlib code, uh, but provides you with additional functionality oftentimes better syntax, and oftentimes better defaults. But it is inheriting a lot of the code from matplotlib. That means that you can continue to use a lot of the matplotlib code in order to update your Seaborn figures. And we'll see some of that in this video series. So that's how Seaborn interacts with matplotlib. Now let's see how Seaborn interacts with another Python library, pandas. 
The other nice thing about Seaborn is how easily it integrates with Pandas. Seaborn can group your data, aggregate it, and plot it all from your Pandas data frame. So let's see that in action. First, I'm going to load in some sample data from the Seaborn library. And if we take a look at this object, it is actually just a pandas data frame. So I can perform whatever pandas operations I would like. Uh, I'll drop a couple of nulls, and it looks like I have uh, about 400 observations now. And just looking at the top part of that data frame, each of the rows in this data frame um, have to do with one particular type of car, and I have various different um, statistics about each of those cars. So now I'm going to use Seaborn's rel plot. Uh, more on this, the specifics of this plot in an upcoming video. Um, but for now, just take a look at the syntax. What I'm passing in here is my pandas data frame cars. And then each of the other properties are just referring to a separate column header from that data frame. So let's take a look at the figure. Excellent. So the really nice thing about um, passing in full data frames is that now I can let Seaborn actually split my data up how I've uh, instructed it to. So for example, this call equals origin, I've created a separate column, you know, a figure in a separate column uh, for each origin that was in my pandas data frame. So that's pretty cool that it's doing all that automatically. And it's also doing the shading of each of those dots based on the number of cylinders that each car has. So Seaborn integrates really well with pandas, and we'll be seeing a lot of that in this video series. So we just saw an example of that rel plot, but there are so many more within Seaborn. Let's take a look at some of the plots that will be demoed in this video series. If you want to see more on how to build figures like the ones you just saw, just stay tuned to the rest of this video series. Up next, I'll be talking specifically about the KDE plot. Hope to see you there.